artist based in Great Yarmouth along the Norfolk coast. I'm a community artist, which means that I'm an artist that works with people in places like schools, libraries, museums and outdoors in public spaces. My training was in art photography and I also work in textiles, drawing and I use found and natural materials in my art making. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make your own amphotype photography prints. So amphotype is a heritage photography technique from the early 1800s. It uses the natural photosensitivity of plants to create photography contact prints in a rainbow of colours. So contact prints means that the subject lays directly on the photosensitive paper. So this technique is the most eco-friendly, environmentally safe method of traditional photography. And also despite having a slightly complicated sounding name, it's actually very, very simple. It doesn't use any chemicals and it can be made with things that hopefully you already have at home. The prints will eventually start to fade and that's just part of working with purely natural things without any chemicals added into it. They don't get fixed in any way. So keep your prints away from direct light, such as in a sketchbook to keep them brighter for longer. And of course you could always take a photo of them. So the first step would be to find some different plant grape based ingredients to create the colorful anthotype emulsion. And emulsion is the word used in the world of photography to describe the photosensitive chemical. And in this case, our emulsion is going to be completely plant based. There are lots of ingredients that can make colour. So think about in your spice rack, you might have things like turmeric or paprika. So you can see here this turmeric, really, really bright yellow. Think about when you're cooking, are there ingredients that you add from your spice rack? that change the colour as well as the flavour and if so they might be worth trying using this technique. I've also experimented with tea, breakfast tea to make shades of brown and also berry tea and fruit tea which can make really lovely pinky purpley shades. So it's always worth giving different ingredients a go. Vegetables are commonly used for anthotype processes. When you're preparing vegetables, the ones that stain your hand would be good for anthotype. So think about things like beetroot, which we know, you know, turns your hands pink. It could turn your paper pink and be used for anthotype. Here I've got beetroot peel and bits chopped off from when I've cooked it fresh and I've just kept it ready. And I'm going to turn that into an anthotype solution. But I've also got pickled beetroot, which is already prepared, and you can see the bit of liquid that gets left behind, that would be perfect and ready to go to use as your anthotype solution. As well as beetroot, there are also vegetables like leafy greens, like spinach, which can make greens. And I've got here chard, which is a, a leafy green vegetable too, and you can make shades of green from that. Berries are great colourful like raspberries and blueberries they could work really well and if you've got flowers in your garden I've got lots of nasturtiums which are very very bright orange but when I've made an anthotype solution they've turned it into a sort of greeny grey colour. It's always worth experimenting and sometimes things turn out differently to what you expect. So remember whatever you use you only need a small amount of the plant matter if it's something like spices or tea, you'll need a couple of spoonfuls. And if it's something like leaves or flowers or veg, you'll just need a kind of a handful, a small bowl full would probably be the enough ingredients to create an anthotype emulsion. Whatever you use, you'll now need to remember that we need to work in a darkened space. So when they start going from ingredients into an anthotype emulsion, we need a slightly darkened space because they start to become light sensitive. It doesn't need to be a full photography dark room, but it does need to be a room where the bright light isn't shining directly in. So we want to keep those ingredients light sensitive when we start to work with them. Once you've got your ingredients, what you need to do is simply blitz up that vegetable matter or that plant matter or whatever it is you're using. So blitz it, squash it, mash it, grind it up, whatever works to get it all broken down. And you can see here, my beetroot has turned all sort of mashy and pulpy. So we're thinking a texture a little bit like 
baby food. And you add a couple of spoons of liquid too. So that could be something like white vinegar. It could be a couple of spoons of alcohol, or it could simply be tap water. With this one, I've added a couple of spoons of the pickling vinegar that it already came in. Different liquids could change the color slightly, but remember only add whatever liquid it is, just add a couple of spoonfuls because we want it to be really highly concentrated, which means there's a lot more vegetable matter than there is liquid. Once you've got it into this state, you'll need to strain the liquid off using something like a sieve or something like a coffee filter that you can pour the liquid through. But my personal favourite would be to use offcuts of old cotton, pillowcases, tablecloths, things like that, which I, I get from charity shops. So I find them really, really good to use and I find it strains the liquid really well. So I'm just going to clear my space. What I'm going to do is work into a, a clean, empty jar and then put whatever you're using as your sieve, your strainer, your filter over the top like that. So that there's a little pocket in it and then you simply need to pour your mashed mix into the top of that and let it drip through and so sometimes it takes a little while for the liquid to drip through and sometimes it's quite quick it depends on on what you're using but once that has dripped through the drips that it makes there that is the anthotype solution and as soon as it has dripped through it's ready to use so it's really really simple and all you need to do now is paint your emulsion, your anthotype emulsion that's come through the bottom of the jar onto a piece of paper. And you can just use an oil paintbrush to do so. So I'm just gonna take out the, the bit that's straining it off and just give it a good squeeze to get any last drops out. There we go. I'm gonna put that to one side and use that liquid that's the bottom of the jar to paint onto your piece of paper. You'll need to make sure that this piece of paper is completely dried before you can make a print from it. That means leave it in a darkened space overnight or if you've got a hairdryer you could dry it on a cool setting. So I'm going to put that one aside to dry for now and here's one I painted earlier. Again, this is with the beetroot pickling juice, and this is now ready to go. So this is a dried piece of paper with the beetroot anthotype emulsion painted on and it's dry. What you'll now need to do is load up your picture frame. So with the base at the bottom, I've taken my picture frame apart. This is just the base at the back. Then you add your anthotype paper. And then you can add your subject. So I've been pressing different flowers and leaves. So choose something that you wanna print with. I'm gonna choose this because I think it fits quite nicely on there, this leaf with flowers on it. And then you'll just need to add your glass. Be careful. And then put your picture frame back together. So picture frames are really good to use because obviously it's all kept completely flush and flat. So just construct your picture frame back together and just be careful as you're putting it together. Check that it's all going to fit nicely and then squish the back down. There we go. What you've got now is your anthotype print that is ready to go outside. So it needs to sit in the sun to expose. And how it works is that the sun UV light rays will shine onto the paper. In my case, it's where it's pink. You can see that'll be where the sun will be able to shine on it. And as the UV light works its way onto that paper, it will start to break it down. So the longer you leave it, the paler this outside will be. What will also be happening at the same time is that your subject or your pressed flower, your pressed leaf, will block the light being broken down, okay? So it will block the UV light and therefore the colour that's underneath will stay the same. So you'll end up with something a little bit like this, where you've got faded backgrounds all around the edge, but the subject is kept a little bit darker and a little bit brighter. 
So the longer you leave it outside, the better. Try for a day in bright light and even a week. And you could even experiment with having it outside for a month. Just see how you get on and different plant matter will take different amounts of time. So it is quite a slow process, but it's quite worth the wait, I think. So once your print has been sunning itself for a long enough time, all you need to do is just unpack your frame and your print will be revealed. Remember that there is no fixing process as part of how we make our amphotype prints. Therefore, take a photo of it as soon as it comes out and you can keep it um, in its fresh state. You can also stop the original print from fading by keeping it out of direct light. So you could put it in a sketchbook, for example. But I hope you enjoy experimenting. I hope you enjoy looking in your garden, and your kitchen for colour inspiration. And I hope you have a great time exploring amphotypes. Bye.